The goal of data analysis is to get answers from your data. For questions like, what are the top five values in this data? Or even more specifically, which school has the highest enrollment? There's usually a very quick way to find the answer. You just look at the data. But what if you want a repeatable process that can extract the information for you? What if you want to set up a function once and never have to get into the weeds of the data ever again? Microsoft released two new functions that can help you answer these burning questions. They're called take and drop and we're gonna learn all about them. The how-to part of this tutorial is actually really easy. They're really simple functions. But I also wanna teach you the why. Why should you even care? Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. No matter what kind of spreadsheet you have, I'm sure it could use a little bit of updating. That's why I created the spreadsheet tune-up a free training just for you. In five short videos, I'll teach you the first steps to optimize any spreadsheet. Let's start with the how-to of using the take function, because the take function is easier to understand or and it has more applications than the drop function. So to start out, it's very basic. So you just type in take, and then the first argument is the array. So what is the, where, where's the data that you want to extract data from? I'm gonna choose this whole table, which is called schools. And then the next argument is how many rows do you want? So let's say I wanted the first 10 rows. And then an optional argument is how many columns you want. So I'm just gonna select, well actually, let's just start with three and then we'll modify it. So you can see that it just extracted the first 10 rows from, and the first, and the three columns from this table. So you can modify the number of columns, whoops, and you can see it just changes that. If you wanted to get the last, um, let's say 10 rows from a table, you just use the negative symbol. So negative 10 will give you the last 10 rows. And that's really all there is to it. As you can see, it's, it's pretty basic. You're just extracting a specific number of rows from the top or the bottom of the table. Now you always need to use, an, I mean, I always recommend <laughs> using an Excel table because then you can reference the data by name instead of address. But this is all very cool, but it's like, why, why? Why would you need to use this? So let's answer that question with some specific examples of uh, data questions that you can answer with this function. So the first one is, which schools have the highest enrollment, specifically, which five schools have the highest enrollment. Now the non-repeatable way would be to sort this by school enrollment and then just like copy the first five rows. But what if you wanted the a repeatable process, meaning the function does that for you? Well, we're gonna start, we're gonna just start over um, and start with the take function. But the array that we're gonna call is not all of the table it's all of the tables sorted by school enrollment. So we're gonna start with another function, which is sort by, and that will um, take an array as the first argument. So I'm gonna sort the schools table by another array, and that will be the school enrollment column. The sort order, we want it to be descending because I want the largest schools first, so then I'll put a negative one here, and then close the parentheses. And then we're back to the take function, so we're gonna take the first five rows, and let's say we do want all three columns. So now we have, and you can see that that, um, oops, these, these match up if you do it the long way, which is Blue Springs High, Marquette, all these, are exactly the same. So now we have a function that's doing that for us. So we can leave this table sorted um, alphabetically by district, and instead we can easily view the top five schools by enrollment at any time. Now if you wanted the, um, the smallest five schools, you would do the opposite in this sort by. So instead of sorting in descending order, you would sort by ascending so that you have the smallest schools first. And if we sort by school enrollment here, you can see that that lines up exactly. Another question you can answer with the take function is, what is which school has the highest enrollment 
by district and which school has the lowest enrollment by district. Now to do this kind of summary, you first need a list of the unique values for the whatever grouping column you have. Mine is called district name. And the way that you list that out is to use the unique function. So if you check out my video called combine, combine multiple rows into one row that I just released, um, it, we use this a lot so you can get some more experience with this. But uh, anyway, so we have a list of the unique uh, districts that are in this data table. So this is the whatever grouping column you have. And then we're going to use a combination of take, sort, and filter. This is a super powerful combination of functions. I always like to build functions from the inside out because it lets you easily see exactly what is being um, fed into each function. So we're going to start with filter because the first step is to extract only the schools that match each row for the district. So what we want to return is the whole table schools, but we only want the values where the district name here is equal to the district name in the schools table. So you can just replace district name with whatever grouping uh, column you have. And then if empty, just return a blank space, which will be, which we uh, refer to with two double quotes, and then close parentheses. So now you can see what we've got here is all of the, um, the whole schools table, but only for this district name. Obviously, it's too big, but we're going to cut it down with the next function. So now, outside of the filter function, so we're going inside to out. The next one is called sort. So we're going to put that um, at the beginning. And then the first, the first argument is an array, which is the result of the filter function. So we leave that first argument and then add a comma. The sort index is which column do you want to sort by? Now we want to sort by enrollment because we want the highest enrollment. So since that's the third column, this argument will be the number three. Then sort order is the same as the other one. It's either ascending or descending. Here we want the highest enrollment. So we're going to use negative one, which is descending. So we want the highest values first. Now we're going to close parentheses on the sort. And you can see that it just sorted this array. So now we have the highest one first. Now we're finally going to get to use this take function. And you can probably guess uh, what the arguments are going to be. We just want the first column. We want the school name for the first row. So we will start by putting take at the beginning of this whole thing. Go to the end and add a comma. Now we're up to which rows we want. We want the first row, so we just number one. Which columns do we want? We want the school name, so we'll just return the first column. And then close those parentheses. Ta-da! Now this is the answer to the question, which school has the highest enrollment for this district? So now we just have to double click on the fill handle and it will answer that question for every single district in this data table. Here's a trick for how we can use one function to get the highest enrollment and the lowest enrollment. And here I have uh, an example for that first district of just the sort and the filter functions. So you can see what we need from the take function in order to get the highest and the lowest enrollment. This is all the schools listed sorted by descending enrollment. So we have the highest is on the first row and then the lowest enrollment is on the last row. So now we can see from this take function, instead of just getting the, the first row, we want to also return the second row. And the way that you can tell this function to return two different rows is with curly brackets. And that is an array, uh, an array formula in Excel. So we're going to type in one, which will give us the first row, and then a comma, and then negative one, which will be for the last row. So you can see I've just replaced the single number one with this little uh, array of one and negative one, and then I'll hit enter. And you can see that it spilled the results over to the next column. 
it spilled horizontally. If you wanted to spill vertically, instead of a kami here, you would use another character. It depends on, I think, your regional settings, which character that is. So just, um, you can look up Excel curly brackets, uh, array function, something like that. Um, but here in the US, it's a semicolon. We'll spill vertically. But here I want to spill horizontally. So you can see that this is the school with the highest enrollment. This is the school with the lowest enrollment. And it actually did pull them both in. So now to extend this down to all the districts, I'm just going to double click on the fill handle. Nope, I'm going to drag down the fill handle. And it actually did it. Sometimes if you have a school that has, um, or a district that only has one school, like this one, they will be the same. But uh, most of the time, if, if there's multiple schools, this is returning the highest enrollment and this one is returning the lowest enrollment. Now let's talk about the drop function. I can really only think of one solid example for when you would use this, which is if you wanted to copy a large table from one place to another, but you don't want to copy all of it. You don't want to copy all the columns so or the rows. So you would start with the drop function, and then the array is the name of that table, which mine is called example two. And then the number of rows, because I want the whole table, I'm just going to leave all of it. And then the number of columns, that means how many do you want to drop and where do you want to drop them from? So if I just typed in five, that would drop the first five columns of that table. Since I don't want the last five, I'm going to type in negative five. And uh, this is the whole table, except for without the last five columns. So, but as you can see, this doesn't include the headers. Here's a trick to include the headers. When you, ha when you name the array, you use the table name. But if you want to include the headers, Start typing in the square bracket and then go down to this structured reference, which is pound sign all, and then close the square brackets. And now you can see that the headers came with it. So this is just a really nice tool to have in your toolbox whenever you need to like summarize or reshape data. Note, these functions are only available for Microsoft 365 and Excel for the web. By the way, Excel for the web is free. Let me know in the comments what you think of these two functions. Can you think of any applications that you can use them in your work? I can't wait to hear from you.